very much, everybody, for coming to my Showtime special. This is number two. Hopefully, we'll uh, shoot a lot more. Hey, man. Absolutely beautiful. We're going to have a great time tonight uh, doing stand-up comedy. Uh, as you guys know, I speak very openly about my wife and I. We get to travel uh, across the country. She writes a lot of the act. And uh, I got to tell you, last week, my wife and I were uh, in Texas. And it was about four days. And we have a three-year-old at home. And we were in Texas for four days. For the first time, my wife and I traveled without the baby. Now, if you have kids, you know this feeling. About a day and a half into the trip, you look at each other and you're like, awesome. <laughs> Kids are awful. I didn't know how much I could get done without a child bugging the hell out of the two of us, three years old, walking in. Are you guys wrestling again? Yeah, yes. How come mommy always loses? Daddy's a wrestler. Mommy's more of a striker. Relax, get out of the room, please. I was in a hotel room with my wife, and I had sex with her for 16 seconds in a row. Oh, I'm not even exaggerating. Six, I put in work. 16 seconds in a row. And I had like a bottle of water on the nightstand, and the whole time I'm looking at it like eight, nine seconds in, I'm like, no, not yet, wait till the end, man. <laughs> Dump it over your head like you won the Super Bowl when you're all done. I am so terrible in bed, my poor wife. <laughs> a lot of comics will come up here and they'll tell you, they have huge cocks and they can have sex all night long. And I'm definitely not one of those comics. <laughs> I have a very small penis. The good news is, I'm not gonna take up a lot of your time with it. <laughs> 16 seconds is like my marathon. My poor wife, my poor bride. My wife has the libido of like a 15-year-old gay boy. <laughs> I, on the other hand, have the libido of like an 80-year-old Jewish woman. <laughs> my wife wants to have sex and I'm like, whoa, whoa, slow down. What's with all the right to it? Can't we kiss and talk about our feelings? <laughs> Could you kiss my neck? Maybe tell me you love me. Are my nipples alone in this whole endeavor? What's the mishigash right to the penetration? I am bad in bed, and my poor wife puts up with it. Thank God. It's amazing. I'm happily married. We've been married 10, well, all, just about 10 years. Together 10 years, married seven, and we're happy. And here's the thing. Every advice you ever got when you were dating, when you decided to get married, everybody wants to give you advice, right? Throw it out the window, they're idiots. They don't know what they're talking about. Anybody that ever tell you is like, hey, or if you go to like a marriage counselor, first of all, let's be honest about marriage counselors, with all due respect. If you and your wife or you and your husband are going to a marriage counselor, it's already over, you're fucked. <laughs> Thirty people right now are going, oh, no. <laughs> I mean, seriously, though, think about the logic. Hey, we don't get along. Let's pay a stranger a thousand dollars to tell us why we don't get along <laughs> and give us bullshit advice. Marriage therapy or like couples therapy, they're always like, hey, why do you guys have a game? I don't know why the marriage therapist is surfer. Hey, bud. <laughs> Hey, why don't you guys have a game night? That would be awesome. <laughs> but that's what they'll say, like, well, you guys having a little rocky marriage, a little rocky patch? Why don't you guys have a game night? And you're like, oh, that's a great idea. Yeah, let's have all the neighbors come over and see my husband's a drunk and he yells at me. That'll be a good idea. <laughs> sure, in the middle of charades, he can shove me in front of all the neighbors. <laughs> that's a great idea. Why don't you guys go out to eat, have a little conversation about the food? That's every, everyone's heard that from somebody. That's the, that's dumb. That's the, okay, oh, remember when you're like 20 years old and you'd be out to eat on a date and there'd be an older couple at the next table, like in their 50s, and they wouldn't even look at each other and they just eat their food <laughs> and they don't talk, they never look, and you nudge your date and you're like, oh my God, look, <laughs> they hate each other. That's the happiest couple in the restaurant. 
They went to a restaurant to eat. They're not going to go there. If me and my wife go to a restaurant, we're eating. We're not going to talk. That's like marriage counseling 101 bullshit. Hey, why don't you go to a restaurant? Talk about your feelings. That'll be nice. Have a little dialogue in a public place. And then you're sitting there with your husband, and you're like, oh, hey, how's your salad? Uh, it has a, a gambling problem, Michael. How's yours? That's <laughs> my salad gambles too much. My edamame cheats on me. How's your food? What's the other thing people always tell you? You gotta have a lot in common. If you're gonna get married, you gotta have a lot of similar interests. <laughs> Garbage, not true at all. My wife and I, we have enough in common, but you would never pick us like on J date. We're not Jewish, I don't know why I said J date. <laughs> J, may, maybe J, J Moore, J date. You would never pick, I had my whole empire mapped out there. We don't have a lot of similar interests. We don't like the same food. We don't like the same movies. We don't like the same music. We don't even like the same people. One of us has a friend come over, and the other one like, goes upstairs into the bedroom like, tell him I'm sick, I hate that guy. <laughs> Where's Jay? Ah, he's got the runs, he can't come down. He said, he wanted me to tell you a good job, he likes you a lot. <laughs> Here's the thing, similar interests are not what keep a marriage afloat. If you really wanna to stay together for a very, very long time, you don't have to have similar interests. Because they'll tell you, if your girlfriend is like a parasailer, they go, looks like somebody's gonna learn how to parasail. No, you don't have to at all. You don't have to have similar interests to be happy together. You know what you have to have? Similar hates. <laughs> yeah. Similar hates. The couple that hates together loves together. <laughs> and my wife and I are the dynamic duo of hatred. <laughs> we hate everyone that's not in this room right now. <laughs> you know you're married to the right person when weird things happen, you know. Ever hate somebody and you don't know why they hate them and your wife tells you why you hate that person? You're like, oh, wow, you're the best. <laughs> And I mean that completely sincerely. Strange things happen. I remember once I was driving down Sunset Boulevard and it was one of those strange days where I said to myself, wow, I've been mean all day. It was about 11 o'clock in the morning and I was like, I've been kind of a dick all day. I've been grouchy all day. And it's very rare to do that much like self-reflection. I'm like, wow, I've been like crabby. I've been mean. I got in an argument with a stranger on Twitter. Like that, like what? Like for an hour and a half, I'm arguing with Milk Lady 420 about the Jets season, like, like crazy. From now on, I'm going to be nice for the rest of the day. I'm not gonna argue, I'm not gonna say anything negative about anybody the entire rest of the day. The moment I had that thought on Sunset Boulevard, a guy walked out of a tattoo parlor with denim cut-off shorts, flip-flops, a Def Leppard t-shirt, and I'm like, oh. <laughs> I'm just staring at the guy and I'm sweating and my wife goes like this, oh, look at this asshole. <laughs> oh! Oh, mi corazón! <laughs> I was gonna let that ball roll out of bounds and he just dove on the court and put that shit back in play. Yeah, fuck that guy, I hate him. <laughs> Let's hate him. <laughs> Similar hates. We don't like the same TV shows. If you looked at our TiVos, you wouldn't even think we knew each other. <laughs> My wife's TiVo is like uh, Food Network, Barefoot Contessa. Don't tell Jeffrey. <laughs> How bad could that be? <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Dateline ID, like 40 Dateline ID murder shows. <laughs> And then at the very bottom, there's like 18 House Hunters International. <laughs> yeah, ladies, ladies love House Hunters International. My TiVo is like UFC fight, boxing match, fight, fight, Daily Show, Oberman, fight, 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 fight. Now, if I was ever murdered, <laughs> the FBI would look at my wife's TiVo and go, well, oh, this is an easy case. She obviously gave him poison chicken. 
Next, I'm making Jeffrey's chicken. How bad could that be? <laughs> she obviously made him poison chicken, watched Dateline ID to learn how to get away with it, and then bought a condo in Toronto from an Indian landlord. <laughs> We don't have to like all the same things because every once in a while the streams will cross. I remember watching, I was watching a fight downstairs, it was a UFC fight, and there was a fighter on my television, this kid Uriah Faber, great kid, all right? Really great fighter, California kid, gorgeous, good looking, 135 pounds, he was just on my radio show, I interviewed him, he was a great interview, very kind, very humble. Two days later, I'm watching pay-per-view and I'm watching him just punch the shit out of some Brazilian guy, and I should be having a good time, but for some reason, I don't like him. My wife comes downstairs to get a Coke Zero out of the refrigerator, <laughs> looks at the TV for one second and goes, who's the asshole with cornrows? <laughs> oh, I love you. I don't know why I hated him until you let me know why I hate him. There is no worse look than a white guy with cornrows. None. <laughs> ever, ever, none. I take that back. White woman with cornrows. <laughs> Yike! That is a bad look. That's when it's time to go home from vacation. <laughs> when you're so drunk, you think cornrows is a good idea on your white head. <laughs> Gentlemen, you're sitting in the hotel room just watching Sports Center, and all of a sudden your wife comes through the door, is plowed. She's like, a Jamaican guy braided my hair for $4 on the beach. <laughs> Time to go home, wrap it up. <laughs> that is a look that either says you drank too much on vacation or you're in jail and you're surviving. <laughs> <laughs>